right so now we are going to study about the half wave potential now what is a half wave potential so it is again a, a technique from which we can have qualitative analysis that is what kind of analyte is present in the previous video if you haven't seen that please go and watch that polarography part one we have discussed about the uh, qualitative quantitative analysis that is how much of the analyte is present but for example i had taken the case of cadmium now we want to know whether cadmium is present or not or what kind of metal is present could it could be zinc it could be nickel you know any any metal could be there or any kind of analyte could be present so how do we uh, find out that we find it out with the help of the half wave potential now what is the half wave potential so this is the polarogram right and in the previous video i had explained from point a to b is the residual current from b to c is the diffusion current and from c to d is our limiting current okay so from b to c is the diffusion current now for finding out the half wave potential let's say from point b to c this is our diffusion current id which is represented by id this is our diffusion current from point b to c so what we need to do is we need to find out we need to cut it at at, at a point which is half the diffusion current so the half of diffusion current is this point so we cut this at this point and corresponding to this point we find out the applied potential so let's say the applied potential at this point at at the point half of a diffusion current is v this v is known as the half wave potential this v is known as the half wave potential and what does this half wave potential do it is characteristic of every analyte so for for uh, for cadmium the half wave potential will be a particular value value for zinc it will be a particular value for nickel it will be a particular value so the half wave potential is characteristic of the analyte one very important thing from which a question can be asked is the diffusion current if you remember the diffusion current is dependent on the concentration of the analyte okay the diffusion current that you see is dependent on the concentration of the analyte but the uh, but the half wave potential is not dependent on the concentration of the analyte that is it is independent of the concentration of the analyte this is a very important point that you need to remember i am pretty sure uh, next time a question is asked from polarography it is going to be on either half wave potential or the next topic that i am going to discuss that is polarographic maxima okay so again i repeat the half wave potential is independent of concentration whereas the uh, diffusion current is dependent on the concentration of the analyte and the diffusion current the maxima of the diffusion current or uh, did uh, is is give, give gives us the quantitative analysis that is how much of analyte is present whereas the half wave potential gives us the qualitative analysis that is what kind of analyte is present okay now if i talk about the polarographic maxima there is a concept called polarographic polarographic maxima now what is this polarographic maximum so if you see if if i draw the uh, polarogram generally like i have said the polarogram looks like this looks like a s shaped curve right but sometimes what happens is instead of this s shaped curve you see a peak a peak like this so generally it the one that i had drawn earlier is the polarogram you see but sometimes you also see a polarogram like this now what, what what is the reason for this kind of polarogram so this is called as a polarographic maxima this is this is some kind of uh, problem that arises in polarography one might think that this is because of presence of a, a second kind of an analyte which is there in the solution but it is not so okay this this can be misinterpreted as a second analyte that is present in the solution but that this is actually a mis uh, i mean that's a problem with the polarographic maxima and this occurs because of a, of a of a of a you can say reason which is known as streaming of mercury drops okay streaming of mercury drops so this polarographic maxima this occurs because of a concept called the streaming of mercury drops streaming of i'd say hg drops now what does the streaming of mercury drops means see in streaming what happens is one like in a dropping uh, potential uh, dropping uh, dme dropping mercury electrode what is happening is the mercury drops are uh, are falling from the capillary now one one mercury drop actually tries to influence the other mercury drop that is known as streaming 
so streaming means the influence of one particular drop or or, or one particular thing over the other is known as streaming so because of the streaming of mercury drops the shape of the mercury drops that is generated sometimes becomes very irregular i mean there's a uh, one mercury drop influences the shape of the other mercury drop because of which we obtain a diffusion current uh, in the form of a in a form of a you know hump in the form of a hump in the spectra or it could be also a sharp sharp line in the spectra which is uh, not generally seen in a polarogram so this is because of a concept called streaming of mercury drops so to prevent this we add in a very very tiny concentration uh, one of these substances okay so i'm writing down the name of these substances it's it's methyl red okay methyl red uh, we have gelatin okay then we have uh, triton x100 and we have methyl cellulose okay so these are the some of the reagents that we can add to prevent the streaming of mercury drops and these reagents are basically organic dyes or surfactants okay so by some mechanism which uh, i don't think is important uh, for this lecture by some kind of mechanism they help in regular shaped drops or they help in uh, proper streaming of mercury drops and so these are the substances that we can use and a question was based on this particular topic where they had asked for what uh, what reason or for what uh, kind of uh, uh, for what uh, purpose is gelatin added in a polar in a polarographic experiment so the uh, so the advantage of adding gelatin is the polarographic maxima can be uh, reduced okay but one thing which you should be cautious cautious about is that you should not add too much of this uh, uh, of too much of this substance because if you are adding too much of this substance what 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 it is going to do is it is going to hamper the diffusion current so if you add too much or a very high concentration of these substances it will in fact suppress the diffusion current and you do not want that you just want that the polarographic maxima should be avoided for that you add this any of these substances in a very very small concentration not in a very high concentration because if you add it in a very very high concentration the diffusion current is also going to be suppressed and you do not want that so this concept is called the polarographic maximum now what are the advantage of a, advantages of a dropping mercury electrode now you might have heard that this polarography is 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 now being appl applied to almost everything and is the most sought after sought after technique right now in the current age and the reason for that is that the dropping mercury electrode has a very has very uh, you know uh, extensive advantages over all the other electrodes for example if i compare it with the platinum electrode which is a solid electrode uh, in platinum electrode uh, you you can uh, think about it like that that a platinum electrode you know continuously degrades okay whereas a dropping mercury electrode like i told you in every 2 to 5 seconds once a drop falls a new a uh, drop is generated which will act as a new electrode so the surface of the mercury is smooth okay it's very smooth and it's free of scratches because of which the surface area of the mercury can be very accurately accurately measured okay so the surface area of those mercury drops can be very accurately measured uh, when compared to solid electrodes like platinum and that is why it is uh, it, it has a very big advantage over the other electrodes the second big advantage is that the mercury it readily forms amalgams okay it re readily forms amalgams so for example like i took the case of cadmium once the cadmium gets diffused on the electrode uh, it reduces and forms ca metallic cadmium now this metallic cadmium it mixes with the mercury to form a amalgam and it uh, with the help of the dropping mercury electrode it is uh, added to the solution so we have for example a dropping mercury electrode right we have a dropping mercury electrode and then there's a drop of mercury now once this cadmium gets diffused on the electrode cadmium 2 plus ions they get reduced to metallic cad cadmium and this metallic cadmium easily forms amalgam with the mercury and it gets diffused in this drop and once this drop falls down the cadmium also falls down with it okay and then we can easily uh, take it out so that is why it is also has a big advantage that it can form easily it can easily form amalgams with lot of metals the third thing is that it has a very wide range the range of this mercury electrode is from 0.4 volt 
प्लस पॉइंट फोर वोल्ट टू टू पॉइंट जीरो माइनस टू पॉइंट जीरो वोल्ट सो फ्रॉम पॉजिटिव पॉइंट फोर वोल्ट टू नेगेटिव टू वोल्ट इज द रेंज ऑफ दिस मर्क्यूरी इलेक्ट्रोड राइट एंड सो इट हैज अ वेरी वेरी वाइड रेंज एंड लॉर्ड ऑफ मेटल्स कैन बी एनालाइज इन प्रेजेंस ऑफ दिस ड्रॉपिंग मर्क्यूरी इलेक्ट्रोड ओके सो दीज आर सम ऑफ द एडवांटेजेस uh associated with the dropping mercury electrode and when i come on to the applications there are numerous applications of polarography like i have discussed in the video earlier it is also it is used for sensing right sensing is a very good very important application because it can uh find it can it can detect and analyze even at very very low concentrations or very very dilute solutions so that is one big advantage of polarography right so and also if we have too many interfering ions so there are lot of uh, tests that are there to find out the uh, kind the ion like you might have done it in uh, in your practicals in in organic chemistry to detect various kinds of ions so sometimes there are lot of interfering ions that may uh, that may alter the uh, values but like i told you like i just discussed the half wave potentials every analyte will have a a characteristic half wave potential so even in the presence of uh, interfering ions you can detect the presence of uh, other ions sometimes what happens is like for example if you take the case of nickel and zinc in case of nickel and zinc what happens is that your um, you know both the the, the e half of nickel and zinc are almost equal okay so the e half potential or the the half wave potential is also called the e half so the e half value is almost equal for both potassium and uh, for both nickel and zinc so instead of using the alkali salt what you can do is you can use some kind of hydroxide some kind of hydroxide so what does the hydroxide do it reacts with the nickel so there are nickel ions and zinc ions in the solution but if you use supporting electrolyte as a hydroxide the hydroxide will react with nickel to form nickel hydroxide the nickel hydroxide will precipitate so the only analyte that will be there in the solution is zinc now this zinc can be reduced and we can quantify the amount of zinc that is present in the solution so these are the several techniques that we can use to uh, uh for for uh, finding out the uh, for finding out the uh, presence of one analyte or the amount of one analyte uh, in presence of other analytes one more advantage is like i told you in the previous video we use dissolved we use dissolved oxygen uh, we basically get rid of the dissolved oxygen by uh, by adding nitrogen or hydrogen which is called purging okay it's called a process the, the process is called purging we do that to remove this oxygen but let's say in a solution we want to find out the dissolved oxygen so we do not carry out this purging process and with the help of uh, polarography we can estimate also the amount of oxygen that is present in the solution so these are the certain uh, applications of polarography and uh, okay so in the next video i'll be talking about the questions i'll purely discuss the questions related to polarography and in the, in the third part of the video you will actually find out that how easy it is to actually solve the questions that are that are asked in the entrance entrance exam from polarography and this is a very important topic because every alternate year in net a question is asked from polarography and last year in gate 2017 as well there was a question based on polarography so this is a very important topic and is gaining importance day by day so it is more than likely that it will be asked in the exam right